Hello everyone, uh, welcome to lesson five. Uh, this one is titled Asexual Reproduction. Um, and as you'll note from the key points, asexual is the first key point. Um, so let's jump right into it. Um, asexual reproduction means reproducing on their own. So asexual is by itself. So in this case, only one parent is required to produce offspring. Um, each offspring looks identical to the parent and to each other. Um, so this is essentially the production of clones, and that's why clones is key point number two. So asexual reproduction is reproduction all on your own, and clones are the uh, individuals that are made from um, the original, and they are all exactly the same. Um, this can be done essentially by mitosis, um, so DNA is replicated and then cells split, but then there are also a few different variations of this, uh, larger scale like starfish, um, or small scale like bacteria or viruses. Um, so there are actually five types, and we're going to talk about those, as well as examples. Um, and then we're going to talk about, uh, or you're going to do some work to find out the benefits and the drawbacks of this type of reproduction. This is not the type of reproduction that most animals um, or humans have. Um, they have uh, the type of reproduction that they have is sexual reproduction, and that involves two parents. Um, but we're going to talk about asexual reproduction um, first, which is just one. Um, so it's also to let you know. Uh, I'm not going to expect you to memorize the five types and all the all of the examples. Um, I'm going to want you to maybe know uh, a couple of these and some examples. Um, the starfish one is a very interesting example that I think you'll have a good an easy time remembering. Um, but also an important part of this whole lesson is the work that you're going to do on the benefits and drawbacks, uh, advantages and disadvantages of this type of reproduction. So let's get into it. Uh, the first type is called binary fission. Uh, this is essentially um, mitosis for things like bacteria or algae. Uh, there's a YouTube video and the link is below in your notes, um, but it is a single parent that uh, cell replicates its genetic material and divides into two equal parts. Essentially, this is mitosis of very, very small organisms like bacteria, uh, algae, amoeba, pro protozoa, um, just very simple things. Uh, the second type is called budding. Um, so this is a type where you, there's kind of like an outgrowth. So it's not an, a direct split in half. Again, there is a video that you can watch. Uh, it is in your notes and it is in um, the YouTube video here. Um, but essentially what occurs is part of the parent pushes outwards to form an outgrowth or what's called a bud. Uh, the bud then pinches off from the parent cell to become identical to the parent. So you can see in this diagram, you have these little notches on all of these, those are buds. And you can see this is starting to get ready to, uh, to reproduce. And you can also see this here in the hydra. Uh, these two buds are growing off, it is going to reproduce. Uh, and they are going to split off and become their own plants. Um, a really common one that I actually have in my house is a spider plant. Looks like that. And all of these droopy parts on the bottom, these are buds. They could be planted. You put them in some water, they grow some roots, uh, and then they can be planted and they'll grow a whole new uh, spider plant. So it is very, very common, uh, some types of plants, to propagate this way. Uh, so this is type number two. Type number three, and again as a reminder, pause where you need to so you can write stuff down and then uh, play again so you can listen. But this type uh, is uh, called fragmentation and it is what happens uh, with starfish. It is a very, very interesting YouTube video, but I'll describe it here for you as well. Um, an, if an organism breaks apart as a result of injury, each fragment then develops into clones of its parents, so sea stars, uh, Japanese knotwood, which is a very invasive plant, if you were just like to mow over it, it would just spread like crazy. Um, with starfish, what happened was fishermen would be fishing for their fish that I, they can actually sell, and they'd dredge up a whole bunch of starfish, and that would be kind of like wasted net space for them. So what they'd do is they'd cut off all their arms, split them all up into a whole bunch of different pieces, and toss them back into the um, 
lakes or the ocean I should say um, what they didn't know is that starfish every time they're injured uh, as long as they have a piece of the center on each arm they can reproduce so each arm would become its own new starfish they are actually propagating uh, these starfish and making them more common and making them more likely to get into their nets um, but they would have no idea they thought that they were killing them um, so fragmentation is a very interesting um, way of reproducing um, another one that we have uh, is vegetative reproduction so there's no YouTube video for this one so I'll just have to describe it to you it's when um, we have special cells in usually plants um, that divide repeatedly to form structures that will eventually make a plant that's identical to the parent, like potatoes. Uh, you take a potato and you cut it all up and you plant it, it will grow a whole new potato plant and more potatoes. You can then go ahead and do that again and again. So potatoes, tulips, runners like strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, these are all things that um, can be propagated um, by taking like a piece of it and planting it. Um, often they're root vegetables, um, but this is a very cool way um, to reproduce. It is very easy for them um, to do that. It's nice for us to be able to plant potatoes as well um, and get more and more out of them. So potatoes, strawberries, as you can see, it gives a, it sends out little parts that go out and plant themselves essentially. Uh, and the last type is spore formation. So it's essentially where um, different things like mold and fungus, they, they come up with these little packages of spores that they can spread. And each spore is able to uh, reproduce all on its own and eventually make its own colony. They often get carried away by wind or by animals eating them or rubbing against them. Uh, but it's essentially mitosis from a very small, small start. Uh, and then they spread themselves out um, purposely. So what I'd like you to do is choose a couple of those and some examples uh, and know those, but don't worry about memorizing every single one of these. Um, your job, what I'd like you to do, it's a little bit cut off, I apologize, but the information is in your notes as well, uh, is I'd like you to read about the advantages and the disadvantages of asexual reproduction. So on the document that's given to you below on your document, um, there's 10 advantages and disadvantages. I want you to choose five advantages and five disadvantages and explain why you think they're the best or the worst. What is the best thing about that? What helps it the most? And which five make it the, um, the worst, which hurt it the most? Um, and you, can send, you can send it to me, um, to my email, or I can see it when you come in. Uh, I can give you feedback. Um, if you have questions, definitely don't hesitate to ask. Uh, and thanks very much for watching, everyone.